thought I'd show you a little bit of how every other stitch looks. So you can see, I'll hit this one, I'll come through this one, I'm going to skip this one, I'm going to go through this one. Hey Speedy's Garage Gang, welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. It's been a couple of weeks because I've got some pretty significant parts on order for Project Sport Runner. I've finished up all the maintenance and everything else on the outside. I'll leave a link to that playlist at the top if you want to check that out. Now moving on to the interior and we're going to do a refresh of the interior. And I started off, I think I mentioned before, I had a pretty tatty uh, center console armrest. So I started off with that. And I gotta say a big shout out to JF Customs. They, are, they have a store on eBay, phenomenal work. And I actually ended up with several of their colors. They sent me these at first, they're tan, and it wasn't quite the right color. And I thought maybe I got the wrong one, so they were nice enough to send me a replacement, but it was the exact same color. And then they sent me a dark one, and then sort of a rosy one. And all of their leather, they use Italian leather, real leather, JF Customs on eBay. Highly recommend these guys, super good to work with. They could have just said, ah, we don't want to fool with it. They're actually in the UK, but I got these very quickly. And they even eventually sent me color swatches of all of the Italian leather options that they had. None of them were really super close. They have like a gray, if you have that color interior. Um, the tans weren't quite right. So I ended up going with black with a tan stitch. And I was gonna do this myself and, and I took the armrest apart and unfortunately, it used a very special staple with like a three millimeter leg, a really, really short staple. And I, I forget, it was like a series 71 or 71 series staple. And the staples weren't that bad. If you went and bought them like five bucks a box or something like that for 5,000 of them, which I only needed, you know, probably a dozen. But the stapler to shoot that stapler, to shoot that staple was like 150 to 200 dollars. And if I was gonna do more of these or do more of this type of work, I would've just bought it. I really intended to knock this out myself, but when I saw how much the stapler was and I thought, you know, I haven't, I haven't done any upholstery work since years ago when I used to ride motorcycles and recovered motorcycle seats. I went by the upholsterer and I said, hey man, what would you charge me just to put this? It came like this and I wanted it installed with some new foam. And the foam, I think I found some neoprene for like 20 bucks for a pretty decent sized sheet. So not super expensive. And he said, man, you're gonna have your, uh, your interior worked on by me. So he knocked it out for free. So you can't, you can't beat free, but uh, that's the new armrest cover and it looks great. I'm gonna show you how to put that back together here in a minute. I also picked up a new steering wheel cover that's, that was leather. It's what it said when I ordered it. But when it showed up, it didn't really look like the armrest. You can kind of see the back of it there. And you can see this looks, looks more like you'd expect leather to look. And when I did a little bit more checking, this is from East Detailing, and I bought all this stuff. None of this is sponsored. Um, they use what's called Echo Leather, and they sort of acted like, hey, we custom make the steering wheel covers, and it takes two weeks, and send us a picture of your steering wheel so we can make sure we get you the right one. However, when it showed up, what do you see? Chinese writing on a label. So I'm wondering if they just get these from some place in China. And someone told me that they found one on Alibaba or some weird website like that for like $20. I paid $49 for this one. It does feel like it's decent quality. The stitch is good and I like the perforations on the side. So for what it is, not bad. I was quoted um, $800 for a new leather steering wheel from Toyota several years ago and I obviously passed on that. And then I was quoted $400 to rewrap my current steering wheel with real leather or, or leather with baseball stitch is what I actually asked for. And uh, that was just crazy for a steering wheel. So I'm hoping this works out and I'm gonna put this on myself. It came with a couple of tools and some thread and I'll show you more of that later. And I did pick up some leather glue. I don't know that it matters what kind, but you want it to be for leather and flexible. So that's what I got for some of the edges just in case I need it. And I'm also going to pull the steering wheel. So I got a steering wheel puller. And the only reason I'm gonna do that, you could technically do it in the truck if you just wanted to sit there and sew it while it's on the vehicle. But I have one on it now that I'll show you in a minute that I did that way and it was kind of a long process sitting in the truck and doing that. So I'm planning to pull the steering wheel off and uh, just do it on the kitchen table. As for the armrest, it came out super nice, probably way better than I could have done it. Um, professional upholsterer. And he did put some new foam in there so it's it's even softer and more comfy feeling than, than it was factory. And this thing's actually super easy to work on. 
um, you got the tray here and it just sits in like that and then it's got these little Phillips head screws that you put back in or take out if you're going to do this yourself there's about uh, 10 of those I guess so we're gonna put those back in real quick and it's plastic so you just want to get them snug and you start by feeding the legs in to the slots really easy and that will lay down and there's a hinge in the back with two Phillips head screws we're gonna put those in next make sure the screws seat all the way and you don't get any more play out of that hinge there we go I think that looks I think it looks really good and wait till you see what I have planned for the interior it's really gonna look good when that's done there's a better view of it from the driver's side and I think the black looks just fine so if you end up having to go that route to get a decent color match or because the other colors won't match it's definitely a viable option even if you stay with the factory oak interior which I am not and here's the condition of the factory factory leather and it's in really good condition I've kept it condition I've kept a Meguiar's leather conditioner on it about once a year which has kept everything nice and soft there's only one blemish really in the entire set and it's right here there's one little sort of little crack or something which could probably be repaired pretty easy I've seen I've seen that kind of stuff get repaired before and in the back seats they're actually like brand new I mean no one ever even rides back here or has ever ridden back here to be honest maybe maybe a handful of times but they're like brand new nice and soft and smooth headrests are in good shape so I may put these up for sale um, somebody may have an interior that's in pretty bad shape and they just want something inexpensive and this would be something they'd be happy with I'm going to do something a little more custom because I've come this far and that's the only reason I'm really even replacing the leather next up is getting this new steering wheel cover installed but I'm just not up for it tonight so I'll be back it's been a couple of days the weather's not the best today it's it's hot and muggy and probably going to thunderstorm quite a bit so i thought it'd be a pretty good day to be inside so i'm going to knock out this new steering wheel cover today the only real special tool you're going to need is a t30 torx bit some of them come in a socket style but you're going to need like a longer one to fit through the plastic of the steering wheel i've got these that kind of go into a screwdriver and what i'm planning on doing is using this guy and it's magnetic and the other end this is made for like a little impact gun the other end is a quarter inch so this is going to kind of be how i'm going to do it set it up just like that and there's my tool and this will easily go inside the steering wheel cover the puller i talked about before i'll show you how to set this up in a minute you can sometimes just grab the steering wheel and yank it off but i want to fool with that um, you can rent these for free basically at the local auto part auto part stores so that's what i did and then a 10 whoops a 10 millimeter I'm going to have to disconnect the battery because of the airbag. So I'll go there and get started. I like to put a rag over the post just so I know it doesn't connect back up by accident. On the back of the steering wheel, there are these little plastic plugs. And we need to pop those off. I'm going to use a little plastic hook tool. And there's some T30 screws back here. That will allow us to get to the airbag or get the airbag off be careful these don't go flying because they are kind of small and there's one on each side so hopefully you can see in there the little t30 screw and these only get tight to like 78 inch pounds so not very tight but the leverage you might be able to do it with a screwdriver type um, tool but the leverage from the ratchet is going to make it a little bit easier and i think these are captive i don't think they come all the way out they'll they'll sort of come out to a stop and then they stay inside the base of the steering wheel and then the airbag would lift off and there's a couple of plugs behind it we'll have to deal with on mine for some reason once i had the screws backed out the airbag wouldn't release so i went and got a long magnet so i could reach into the hole there and just sort of pull the screw back in case it was bound up and I found if I locked the steering wheel, that made things a little bit easier. And now the airbag will pop right off. And then we've got the airbag connector right here, 
which has a push pin right there. And then airbag is now out of the way. And when you store this, you want to store it face up. So I'm going to put it on the workbench face up. And that's in case, for some reason, the airbag were to deploy, it doesn't become a projectile. If it's like that, it becomes a projectile. If it's like that, the airbag just goes off. Not the end of the world. You don't want that to happen, obviously, so keep it away from electrical stuff. But at least no one will get hurt. Next, I am going to disconnect the cruise control connection. It's a little tab in here. Wasn't too bad. And now all that is left is the 19 millimeter steering wheel lock nut. I am going to unlock the steering wheel and just point it straight. Like so. And once I have the nut off before I actually remove the steering wheel, I'm going to mark the steering wheel and the threaded column that it connects to so that I have an indexing mark for when I put it back on. 19 millimeter. And this only gets tightened to like between 30 and 40 foot pounds. I think the field service manual says 37, so it didn't take much. Here's where I'm gonna make my index mark. Make one at the top and one at the bottom. That way I can't mess it up. hard to mess that up now. The way the puller works is it's sort of a jig and these holes right here are made for the puller or a puller tool and the threads are M8 by 1.25 so you just start that. Give it a few threads, slide this on, put the other bolt in the other side and then your threaded rod goes in and provides tension and as you tighten the larger threaded rod it pulls the steering wheel off and this one happens to have a little cap that snaps on and it sort of protects the threads or the top of your steering wheel shaft so I'm going to use that too there's your threaded rod there's what it looks like all set up you want to make sure you've got enough um, threads into the steering wheel that it's you know that's where it's going to pull from so I got several threads started and conveniently this one actually has a 19 millimeter nut for the top. Try to do this one handed. That's all there is to it. With the tool out of the way, just pull the steering wheel off and be careful of the airbag connector. All right, I've got me a pretty comfortable spot set up in the house to work on this thing. And the first thing I have to do is remove this leather cover that I actually put on this steering wheel about 15 years ago. It's real leather. It came from, I think, a place called Performance Products. I don't know if you guys that are into Toyotas remember that place, but I believe that's where I got it. The original steering wheel had some scuffs and stuff on it, and a new steering wheel from the dealer at the time was like $800, and I couldn't justify that, still couldn't. Um, so I put this cover on it. The one thing I never really liked about it is that it didn't have pieces that came down and went over behind the airbag on these arms on the four corners there. Um, it, it just kind of ran around. I didn't, at the time, this is all that was available. So it's the best I could do, but now there's better ones, obviously. So the first thing I have to do is cut this one off. And I actually put this one on in the truck, and that's why I decided to pull the steering wheel this time and do it somewhere where it could be a little more comfortable. I got the old cover removed pretty easy and I did degrease. I used a degreasing cleaner um, on the steering wheel because as part of installing the new cover you use some double sided tape to sort of hold it in place and you'd be surprised how much grease your hands can leave on on your steering wheel. So I, I degreased it twice actually so it is ready for the new cover and I did also remove the two little Phillips screws here and here that go to this plastic cover. And that was so I could lift it up, and that way when I tuck the new cover underneath, I can be sure to get it all the way behind that plastic trim piece, and then it will look factory. So now we just got to get started installing that new cover. The steering wheel cover came with some double-sided tape, thread, and a needle, and a trim tool. You want to start by 
cutting some sections of the double-sided tape and it's super sticky but very thin and you want to put it I'm doing mine about a quarter inch from the edge of the steering wheel cover itself and you don't want any in the middle where your hands will be and I'm sort of doing it a section at a time I'm not going to bore you with filming all that but you get the idea I'm just going to keep sticking this, the tape along and where the spokes are I'm going to probably do them long ways because I want them to stick very well where those spokes are going to be but I'll figure that out when I get there and once I have the double-sided tape then I want to put it on put the actual cover on the steering wheel so I'm going to finish this up and we'll get it mounted I've got it all taped up and ready to go on and pay attention because I'm assuming F means front and there was a B down here I'm assuming that means back so that's the direction I'm going to install the cover and they say to flip the steering wheel upside down I'm assuming if you're doing this in a car with a steering wheel in the vehicle for some reason they want to do it upside down since mine's out I'm just going to put it on there and then the next step is to start peeling the other side of the tape off and start sticking the uh, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions to the steering wheel and then coming back like halfway between the spokes or the center and the side and sticking that and kind of going around and getting started with the tape before we start threading the needle. All the taping is done and I found using a pair of tweezers to peel the little pieces of paper off made it much quicker and easier and pulling those screws out definitely helped me get the uh, cover underneath the back trim so it'll actually look factory and then of course on the front the airbag will cover up these sections and I did pick up a little bit of leather glue just in case I need it I'm gonna see at the end um, once I have everything stitched how that lays down but it's already looking really really good and I actually went and put it back in the truck to line up 12 o'clock since I do have the, um, the index mark in red to make sure I got that right and everything's looking really good next up is to start stitching and I think I'm gonna start probably somewhere in here to get used to it and the idea will be sort of get it pretty close and tight in the curve and then every other stitch so probably every stitch in here then every other stitch through here so this will be a good section to start with so I can figure out what I'm doing I'm moving along on this thing and I didn't want to bore you guys you know sitting here watching me sew for a couple of hours and I wanted to kind of figure out some techniques so I could give some tips and um, I'm not I'm not real good at sewing I've done very little of that so um, I had to sort of figure it out as I went it comes with instructions but they're obviously written by someone who English is not their first language so um, I'll try to show you some of the ways I came up with doing it but I, I sort of broke the steering wheel down into sections so from from inside so here to here from here to here from here to here and now the last section I have is this final piece across the top what I will say is you want to make sure when you bring the two sides together use your hands to bring the material together and then stitch it and I'll show you some of that here in a second but you don't want to try to pull the material together with the thread even though it is nylon thread it's very strong but you, you run the risk of tearing or breaking something so you want to squeeze it together and you want the seam to line up with your original seam so that the threads are all nice and even all the way around. What you don't want to have happen is it wave or, or move to the back or come, you know, do something like that. And that's where that tape comes in handy to sort of hold everything in place. And you want to start from the back and poke the needle through the leather. And what I found, this needle is not super sharp, which is probably a good thing because I'd have poked myself a bunch of times. But you want to find one of the existing holes and come through from the back to the front put a knot let's see if I can find the knot put a knot in your thread and it is nylon thread so what I did is put a big knot in it and then used a little butane lighter to melt it so now I've got a nice good knot that will pull up against the back of the leather and not pull through as I'm sewing so that's the first few tips I can give you and some of the cheaper covers I saw didn't look like they covered around these um, spokes very well. But as you can see, this one easily goes around the spokes. And I'm going to put a dab of uh, glue on the edges just to hold it down. But I will say this East Detailing cover is pretty high quality and it fits very, very well. So now I'm going to show you how to get some of these stitches started. You decide you're going to do this yourself.
First thing you need to figure out before you start on a section is determine how long to make the thread because you don't want to run out halfway through and then try to figure out how to reconnect the thread together to finish your stitch. I used about a three and a half to four times the distance for the length of thread that I would need. So you can kind of start measuring it out. So there's about one distance and then I would do two, three, like three and a half three and a half times to give me enough to give me enough thread and then you just um, put the needle or put the thread through the needle and since this is nylon thread I just did it straight up I didn't double loop it or do anything weird so I just kind of did kind of did like that right there I'm going to start from the back and try to find an existing hole to come through because it makes it way easier than making a new hole See if I get lucky. This takes a minute sometimes to find one. Right here. See? And you pull it through all the way till you get to the knot. See? The knot stops it right here. And then you want to go through the top or the outside end, again through an existing hole if you can find one, which I recommend. that and don't do like I just did and come on the outside of the steering wheel so now I gotta do that again that's gonna that's the other tricky part is you got all this thread to deal with and again I guess if you do this a lot you probably know to watch for that kind of stuff but you just saw a mistake so you want to make sure you've got the thread all behind the area you're gonna sew hope you can still see that it's gonna be a little tricky to show you and then pull that together and that's getting your that's how you're going to get started now you want to take your hand and sort of squeeze that together and you want to do that twice do that two times to give you a really nice secure tight starting point and then it's really just kind of kind of connect the dots so in the real tight areas like around these spokes and in these curves i'm going to hit every stitch back and forth back and forth back and forth and once i clear this curve probably about the third one of these i'll just do every other stitch and you can see it sort of changes see the threads it sort of gives you a nice pattern that's what it starts to look like and you can see some of these other ones whoops some of these other ones that i've done where i hit sort of every stitch in those curves and then every other stitch down here so that's what it's going to start to look like and honestly it's I haven't found it to be all that difficult. So I'll kind of give you an idea. So I'm through here. And again, you kind of keep, got to keep track of where your thread is. And this, this longer section is going to be a little more tricky in that regard because there's so much thread. But you see how I've kind of got it, try to get where you can see it, pull it, pull it sort of tight right there. Maybe I better do it this way. And then I'm at the top. So now I'm going to come through. I'm going to catch that one see then I pull it through and I've found that I'll do you know two or three stitches like there's one and I'll come back up I'm gonna catch the next one at the top up here pull the thread through and after I have two or three I'll take a look at my work because now is your opportunity to make it perfect and I'll sort of squeeze it together get it set like I want it and then give the thread a little bit of a tug to set, to set it basically to set it up hopefully you can see that and like I said I'll go back and forth so I'll hit this one then this one then this one then this one then this one when I get probably about right here I'll do every other one thought I'd show you a little bit of how every other stitch looks so you can see I've hit this one I've come through this one I'm going to skip this one I'm going to go through this one I'm going to squeeze the leather together as I pull. Skip this one, go to this one. That's really all there is to it. That's how you get that pattern. A couple more quick tips. If you did the center mark like I did, it's a little bit thicker 
than the rest of the leather. So I actually found that if I use some pretty strong tape to help squeeze the two halves of the, or the two sides of the cover together, and then I could use a tool like a small screwdriver and come in and just slide underneath the threads and just give it a, just a little gentle, you don't do too hard, it's a little gentle tug. It would help tighten that gap up to get it super close. And the other thing I did is I tried to sort of count the threads where I did single stitch, where I was going through each one. And there's about between 10 and 12 on each of the little corner areas. And so I made sure they matched. So if I did 10 to 12 on that side, single stitch, I did 10 to 12 on this side, single stitch. So everything looks symmetrical. We're on the home stretch. Only thing left to do is sort of finish up this section and then I'll show you how to bind off the end of the thread. I finished stitching this up and I want to show you um, one of the more confusing things, at least for me, is how to bind off the end when I had finished a section. So you can see I came through the last loop and then I went back through the same hole on the opposite side so that I came back through the leather. So that's step one. And then step two is you back stitch back stitch just like you were doing before you're just going backwards and you only have to go up like three or four make sure you don't catch an edge like that three or four stitches and then finally go back through one of the holes I picked the last one just because it was easy to get to from the back side you're gonna go from front to back, pull the thread through, and now we're gonna make a knot on the back side right here to finish it off. There's the knot, hopefully you can see that. And once I had it tied, since it's nylon thread, they say you can use a little bit of heat from a lighter. Be careful, because you don't wanna damage your leather, but you can sort of heat it up and it'll melt into place. So that is the steering wheel all stitched up. Next up, I'm going to deal with these little extra pieces with a little bit of uh, fabric glue. There it is completely finished. And I came in and glued these down and strategically cut some little pie pieces out if it was wanting to bunch up to make it lay flat everywhere. And I did the back as well so that everything is tucked behind the uh, plastic cover in the back and it looks like it actually came from the factory this way. That's how I try to do all of my projects. So this leather wraps way down in there. So when the airbag covers on here, it'll, it'll all this will kind of fold in and just disappear. And I tried a couple of different glues. I had this one, which uh, had pretty good reviews, but it's almost like Elmer's glue and it took forever to dry and it was too hard to hold the pieces in place and get them to dry. The nice thing about this is that you just wipe it up with water if you happen to get get some on it and you want to wipe it off. Then I tried this stuff and kind of the same problem. It wouldn't get tacky enough to hold the leather in place. So I actually just tested a small spot with regular old super glue and believe it or not, it worked the best. There's probably somebody that does upholstery work watching this that's screaming at the computer right now telling me this is the wrong thing to use, but it didn't hurt anything and it worked the best. I mean, I would put a drop. I use it very sparingly and we just put a drop and then I actually used a little plastic tool to hold the leather in place while it's set and then just remove the tool and you can see how it turned out. And when I say little pie cuts like that much, if it wanted to, you know, sort of, sort of bunch up, because I wanted this to be completely flat. So if I got a little wrinkle, I would just cut a little triangle out so it would lay down. And here's what I had left over. Plenty of tape, plenty of thread, uh, East Coast or East detailing actually sent two needles and I did break one. So I'm glad they actually sent a spare. That was very nice. And there was a thimble in there, but I really couldn't, couldn't use that very much. But don't be worried about using too much thread on your sections. I had gobs left over. So now I just need to go and get this installed back on the truck. Installation is just the reverse of removal. Feed the airbag harness through the top of the opening in the steering wheel. Make sure you line up your index marks on the steering wheel and the steering shaft, and then install the steering wheel set nut. And the set nut gets torqued to 37 foot-pounds. 
reconnect the cruise control plug and the airbag harness. Remember, leave your battery disconnected. Like so, and then just set it in place. Tighten the two T30 Torx screws. And tighten the Torx 30 or T30 Torx to 78 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. Now you can reconnect the battery. And check that out. It looks fantastic and is a huge upgrade over what I had. I'm digging the uh, 12 o'clock index mark in red. That's going to go real well with what I've got planned next. Super happy with how that turned out. Some people said they had issues, and I don't know if it was with the East detailing cover, but similar ones not fitting well around the edges of the spokes. But as you can see, this one is just like factory and looks really, really good. It looks like it came on the truck, which is sort of what I demand. When I do something like this, I don't want to say perfect, but I get it as close to perfect as I possibly can. Next up is a test drive. I want to make sure everything's working like it's supposed to. Particularly want to check the uh, steering, obviously, as well as the cruise control. So I'm going to check those real quick. Hopefully be good to go. All right, steering feels pretty good. No issues there. Cruise control light is working. And cruise control is working as well. Horn works too. So that's another project complete. And you gotta think, steering wheel is something, it's probably, other than the seat maybe, it's the largest interface you have to your car. So having something nice to to hold on to as a steering wheel is important, at least to me, and this is a huge upgrade versus what I had. It's a little bit smaller diameter than what I had before, and I didn't really like the other one because it was a little bit too thick. This one's sort of in between a factory steering wheel and what the other one was, and it's got a nice width to it that's comfortable. The finish on it is really nice, and it, and it feels like it's even a little bit, little bit cushiony maybe. I don't know if that's a word, but um, going over the top of the old, the old cover, it just feels good. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage as well as the website www.speediesgarage.net. Be sure to check back because I got some more interior work to do on this truck and hopefully I'll see you out there. <laughs>